mace. The translucent shades diffuse any incidental light. Storm beams are cast on the wall and the immediate pavement. Small spotlights which illuminate tiles below provide an additional lighting to the lawn area. The dark grass thickly populates the lawn. The double doors cover the steel box. It resembles a very odd style hurricane shelter, but shows little weathering. Where brute force won't work, a key will. A small stone mosaic marks the entrance to the psychiatrist's quarters. It appears to be the main entrance to this side of the building. Circular stone cobbling marks the threshold. A man wearing a white lab coat leans unsteadily against the wall. You strike up a conversation. How's it going, buddy? Yeah, man, she is green. Hey, what's that in your pocket? It looks like he's passed out. You slip the lab coat off of the unconscious doctor. You look through the pockets of the lab coat and find a set of keys and a diary. They jingle like copper bells. You unlock the doors. You enter the basement. The arrival times of the various crates can be discerned by the residual dust dating method. Some of them could not have been here for more than a few days, as their cleanliness is very uncharacteristic of the environment. The reddish beams and posts seem to maintain the primary structural integrity of the building. They appear to be built on an unusually large scale. The metallic cylinders have the word Noxy stenciled on them. They resemble modern self-cooled shipment containers now primarily used for pharmaceuticals. The elevated catwalk allows access to the ground level. The staircase to the basement, however, remains retracted. You see no visible mechanism for its operation. The power units lie away from the crates. A thick, shielded jacket prevents corrosion and moisture flow. Upon close inspection, you see a small panel which seems to be unhinged. You flip open the panel and find a security keypad. You take a closer look. You press the return key and a door opens.
The cages are built to contain aggressive animals who must be fairly large for the containers to be the size of a jail cell. The bars, which appear to be frequently scratched from the inside, are marked as highly electrified. Some kind of creature appears to be trying to claw at the scientists, but from this angle you can't see clearly. They appear to be carefully observing the mutant's behavior. They seem to be automatic. The large glass observation window reveals a control room of sorts. A heavy blast door seals the transport tunnel and is virtually vacuum tight. The rooms to the right house the larger laboratory machinery. Among the hardware, you recognize several workstations and a centrifuge. There are many other pieces that are without meaning. They appear to be busy discussing various complications in a jargon that you do not understand. The machinery here seems highly specialized. Many of the parts resemble pressurized gas tanks and pumps. These units are, for the most part, inactive. A number of books are shelved here. The spines indicate that some are technical manuals, some are reference books, and one looks like a personal journal. The large tranquilizer resembles more of an assault weapon than a passivating tool. A sharp bayonet-like dagger is attached to the barrel. The smaller one looks like a handgun and is less powerful. You grab the smaller pistol as it is easier to conceal. The doors slide open smoothly. You go through the doors. A fiery red alarm light is bolted to the wall. The stains of dirty water mark the wall and floor of the room. A large television monitor sits in the corner of the room, with data scrolling past the screen. Small droplets of water plummet down into a puddle. A complex display is filled with readouts and measurements of the laser beam's strengths. There does not appear to be any switch to turn them off. Bars of red light seal off the examination table. Bars of light prevent Joe from escaping his cell, and a strip of duct tape is keeping him from screaming. It looks as if someone tried to beautify this otherwise drab room with this poorly potted tree. You rip out the tree and take the pot. The controls are meaningless to you. There is still a little soil in the pot. You put the flower pot under the drip, hoping that it will fill up. A small security box is attached to the wall. You can't seem to get a grip on anything to pull open the cover. The box opens to reveal a variety of plastic tubes. You melt the plastic tubes and clip the wires inside with your wire cutters. You wait for the pot to fill 
then pick up the pot of water and throw it at the control panel. You unstrap Joe TV.